Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a pretty short tutorial on steady state 2D heat transfer with conduction. And this example was taken from a NAFEMS benchmark collection. NAFEMS is like the, the organization for engineering modeling and simulations. So um, I figured this would be a good, easy tutorial today since my last one was so long. So we're going to be creating a model of a 0.6 meter by one meter domain with the following boundary conditions. The left boundary is insulated. The low ba lower boundary is kept at 100 degrees Celsius. The upper and right boundaries are convecting to zero Celsius with a heat transfer coefficient of 750 watts per meter squared per degree. Um, in the domain use the following material property thermal conductivity is 52 watts per meter per degree Celsius. And here's the figure, or here's the plot that we're going to be creating, a surface plot of temperature um, modeling 2D heat transfer by convection, or conduction, sorry, it's a, within the metal plane, so it's a, wait a second. It does include convection. With conduction, the title says conduction, but then the, the description says convection. So which is it? <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. But those are not the same thing. Convection and conduction are two distinct things. I'm not sure why the... My guess is it's... Let's see. Temperature distribution resulting from convection to a prescribed external temperature. Okay, so again, it says convection. The benchmark result for the target location, x equals 0.6 and y equals 0.2. So let's see, where's that? Right here, this is x equals 0.6 and y equals 0.2 is a temperature of 18.25 degrees Celsius. Comsol multiphysics model using a map mesh with 9 by 15 quadratic elements gives a temperature of 18.265. I guess this is an experimental result and this is the modeled result. Okay, so let's get started modeling. From the file menu, choose new, model wizard, and we're gonna select 2D model. In the select physics tree, select heat transfer, and heat transfer in solids, HT. Add. And then we're gonna do a stationary study. Um, click study and select stationary and done. Next, we're moving on to geometry. So we're gonna add a rectangle of width 0.6 meters we're keeping the default units, so all we have to do is go to geometry, rectangle, width override with 0.6, the height is staying at 1. We're keeping the default units, so let's build all objects. And now we're moving to the physics module, heat transfer and solids. In the model builder window under component 1, right click hand, heat transfer and solids and choose temperature. So let's see, here's, here's temperature. So we added a temperature condition, which now appears under solid one, initial values, and thermal insulation one. And we're gonna select boundary two. In the settings window for temperature, locate temperature section, and in T naught, we're going to change this to 100. And we're gonna override Kelvin with deg C, degree C. And now we're going to add a heat flux condition. So under physics tab of the toolbar at the top, we'll go to boundaries, choose heat flux, select boundaries three and four. So four is the right side, three is the top. And in the settings window for heat flux, locate the heat flux section right here. And from the flux type, choose convective heat flux. Okay, convective. 
and in the H text field type 750. So this is the heat transfer coefficient for the material, which we're defining Tx text field type 0 degrees C. All right, moving on to solid one, we're going to click solid one at the top of the um, conditions under heat transfer and solids. And then the settings window for solid, locate the heat conduction solid section. Right here. From the K list, choose user defined. So we're changing from material to user defined. I'm typing 52 for our uh, given material. No other material properties enter into the domain equations for the stationary model. And if you want to take a look at the governing equation, you can just expand equation or go to heat transfer and solids equation. Anything underneath this drop down will have the same governing equation. All right, so you have DZ rho CPU times del temperature plus del Q equals DZQ plus Q naught plus DZQ TED. And Q equals negative DZK del T. All right, so those are our two governing equations. Now for the mesh. So in the mesh toolbar, click mapped. So I'm going to click on mesh at the top. And mapped is this icon about in the middle of that toolbar build all so we're not changing anything just building a default mesh for mapped and then going to study to hit compute so we've got 9 by 15 grid and here is our surface plot of temperature and kelvin so the tutorial says in the model builder window, expand the results temperature HT node and then click surface. So we're just going to expand that. It's already selected, but now we can um, change different things about our plot in this section. In the settings window for surface, locate the expression section. And from the unit list, choose degree C. So we're going to change units from Kelvin to degree C. And I'll go ahead and hit plot so we can see what that looks like. So it changed from a scale of 0 to 100. You can see the hottest area is over in the bottom left hand corner. And the coolest area is up here on the right. Those were our insulated areas, right? The first default plot group shows the temperature field. Compare with figure 1. The benchmark value for the temperature at x equals 6. x equals 0.6. Um, and y equals 0.2. So if you just click on a point, it will populate down here in the evaluation 2D. So I'm getting kind of close, 0.599961, y equals 0.1928. That's pretty close, but you could also just export the data table and find exactly that point, x equals 0.6 meters, y equals 0.2. So we're going to add a cut point 2D one plot. In the results toolbar, click cut point 2D. This little icon with a point and a box around it. So we're going to do cut point 2D and locate the point data section and the X text field type 0.6 and Y 0.2 or benchmark point of interest. And now we're going to do the point evaluation. In the results toolbar, click point evaluation. So up here, let's see, it's this icon with a bunch of numbers, e to the negative 12. So evaluate, point evaluation. In the settings window for point evaluation, locate the data section. From the data set list, choose cut point 2D1. So we're changing the source data to cut point 2D1. And locate the expressions. We're going to put degrees as degrees Celsius instead of Kelvin and click evaluate. And it appears here in that table in the bottom right hand corner. Temperature degree C at this point is 18.265 degrees. 
And that's it. If you want to export that, you can just export that one. There's only going to be one row, one column. If you want all the data, you can also do that from, let's see, data up in the results tab in the toolbar. Um, <clears throat> you can do a text file output and name it whatever you like, browse where you want to put it. So let's just put um, steady state 2D heat transfer. They're just populating the file name and where we're going to put it, and then we have to actually export it. Export now. All right, and then we can go find it. All right, and there you go. That's all of our data. So if you wanted to look at a particular point or export this data and manipulate it in some other program, you know, Python, uh, Tableau, anything else, if you prefer, uh, I don't know why you would do that, but sometimes it's useful to have the data in numerical form as opposed to data visualization that you get like with the surface plot. So that's also available to you and you can find the same thing. Go to um, x equals, I mean, it'd, it'd probably be easier to just select all, copy, and then put it in Excel, and then you can search more easily for certain points you're looking for. But that's it. That was a nice, uh, simple little tutorial for steady state 2D heat conduction, uh, heat transfer with conduction. So if you like this one, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe for more ComSol tutorials, and I'll see you next time.